Okay, so uh, here's another proof by induction that's different. And this we did this one in class, and I decided to do it in a video because in class this, the students were kind of just staring at me and, and thinking, wow, this is, they know what to do, but they had a hard time saying it. So I said it one way in class. I kind of actually did it in paragraph form. Um, I did it again at home here, and I'll do it in the video a little bit more, say, m mathematical, for lack of a better word. There's still a lot of words in it, but nevertheless, it's it's maybe a little more organized. So this is the problem, and I think it's an interesting problem. Um, this C of n causes issues to me. So let C of n be the constant term in the expansion of x plus 5 to the n. Um, Prove by induction that the constant term for this guy is 5 to the n, no matter what n is. Okay. So before I start fiddling around with this, let's talk about expansion of this guy. I mean, I guess it just rem remains to be seen what you remember of that. Um, it just depends. So let's remember what n is. So n is a set of natural numbers. So I call them the counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. 0 is not included. We don't start counting at 0. Um, so if I'm going to expand something like this, uh, one thing I do know, I'm not going to actually expand this to the nth. That doesn't make any sense, but I do know something. I do know that the first term is going to be x to the n, and the last term is going to be 5 to the n, and that's always the constant term. That's something that you have to know about mathematics in order to be able to do this problem. So when I do the base case, it does help to kind of take a look at that to confirm that what you're thinking is right. So if I do n equal 1, um, which is the lowest end here, I can do x plus 5 to the first, which is just x plus 5. And here's the constant term. As you can see, it is 5 to the first. 5 equals 5 to the first, which is c of 1, where they have that number 1 in there is for n equal 1. I just think the notation in this problem is a little weird, but check. So let's do n equal 2 just to confirm. Again, you don't have to show this one. You could do it on a scratch sheet of paper, but it is helpful to, you know, again, make sure you know what you're doing. So when I FOIL this out, I get x squared plus 10x plus 25. And there's my constant term. So I say that 25 is 5 squared, which is c of 2, where n equals 2. So it is checked so far off in both of these. Okay. So let's go to our inductive hypothesis then our inductive hypothesis. So I'm just going to let uh, n equal k minus 1. Then I'm going to be looking at x plus 5 to the k minus 1. Remember, that's what n is changing to. So n is the power here. So I'm just kind of following this right along here. So I did n equal 2. I put it up here. I expanded it. n equal k minus 1. I put it in here and expand it. And here when I expand it, I know that this first guy is going to be x to the k minus 1 plus a bunch of stuff plus 5 to the k minus 1 is going to be the last term. Once again, this is the constant term. So I know that the constant term is 5 to the power of k minus 1, which is my c of k minus 1. Again, that's my n value. Now, I'm doing a lot of extra stuff here that you probably wouldn't have to do, like this part here. But this is supposed to be helping you out so that you know where I'm getting the things that I'm getting. Now, this is true. This is a truth. So I need to utilize that when I do my inductive step. Okay. So my inductive step, I'm going to keep following with the same pattern. My inductive step is now where n is equal to k. So I have to think about um, x plus 5 to the k. Now when I expand out x plus 5 to the k, I'm going to get x to the k plus a bunch of stuff plus 5 to the k. Now the constant term 
is 5 to the k, but we have to actually prove that it's true based on the inductive hypothesis because we're asked to prove this by induction. We could probably prove it other ways, but we're going to prove it by induction. So necessarily, this isn't really the best step right here. What we do want to consider, though, if I'm going to use my inductive hypothesis, let's start over again. Let's consider that n equals k and consider the fact that x plus 5 to the k is equal to x plus 5 to the k minus 1 times x plus 5 to the first. Now that is using the inductive step, the inductive hypothesis. All right, so I know by using you know Pascal's triangle and different things in algebra, we can prove it this way, but we're going to use inductive, so we need to start here. So I know that my polynomial x plus 5 to the k equals x plus 5 to the k minus 1 times x plus 5 to the first. So now if I just talk about constant terms, I know here my constant term is 5 to the k minus 1 times 5 to the first. Now these aren't equal. I just made that mistake. Students make that all the time. It's not equal. I'm just looking at the constant terms. The constant term for this guy is 5 to the k minus 1. The constant term for this guy is 5 to the k. So that means that this is equal to, I'm uh, sorry, 5 to the first here. This is equal to 5k. So if these two things are equal, or so since k plus 5 to the k equals k plus 5 to the k minus 1 times k plus 5 to the first, their constants, constant terms, oh, oh sorry, their constant terms must also be equal. So since the constant term of x plus 5 to the k minus 1 times x plus 5 to the first is 5 to the k minus 1, 5 to the first, or 5 to the k, then the constant term of x plus 5 to the k is 5 to the k. So by induction, c of k equals 5 to the k The c of n equals 5 to the n and we're done. That is a little tricky. The way that you word it makes a difference. So if I go back again, this, this seems like I'm done, but I'm not using induction here. So I have to think about what, how I, do I utilize this fact here? So I consider those two things are equal. Those are the constant terms that gets me somewhere. So I have to talk about how this all relates then. So since algebraically that's true, their constant terms has to be equal. If this polynomial equals this polynomial, those constant terms must be equal. So since the constant term of this side is 5k, then the constant term of the other side is 5k. So by induction, c of k is 5 to the k, thus c of n is 5 to the n. Pretty cool proof.